Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2021 film Pig, and I know, I know, it is definitely not horror. It is not, and I kind of suspected going into it that it wouldn't, but I feel like this is a good review to do still because a lot of people in the horror community have an affinity for Nicolas Cage, and rightfully so, because the majority of the stuff he's been doing is horror, plus he's just a fun actor. Now, I wasn't expecting a whole lot from this film, I will say this much. Oh, and this is going to be a no-spoiler review since it's such a new film, and I would highly recommend people actually check this film out. It really surprised me with where the film went from start to finish, and Nicolas Cage's performance was outstanding. He doesn't talk a ton in the film, especially not early on. He starts to talk more as it goes on, but... He's just got like this low energy, doesn't talk a whole lot, but that's the character. And he does it so well. Uh, he's just, think something like, uh, it's it's a little bit like Mandy, but no horror or no action, and it's way more subdued. A uh, really good film, though. But I'll get a little bit more into that. This is directed by Michael Sarnowski, who also did a, the Olympia TV series, which I've not seen but um, really good directing, really excellent directing job there. Uh, it was written by Sarnowski and Vanessa Block at the same time. Smart script, well done script. This film in general, just very well pulled off in my opinion for what the material is. And yeah, I just, I really recommend it. Stars Nicolas Cage, obviously, uh, who, you know, horror crowd knows him most recently for uh, The Prisoners of the Ghostland, uh, Mandy, Willie's Wonderland, which I have a review for Willie's Wonderland, and Prisoners of the Ghostland. Uh, also, Alex Wolf is in this, who people in the horror community know most from the film Hereditary, which, great actor as well. Uh, in general, just really good acting in this, especially Wolf and Cage, who are the two largest characters. Obviously, Nick Cage's character is the main character, but Wolf plays a very substantial secondary character. So the synopsis, I'm not going to give too much away because I don't like to do that, especially with these no-spoiler reviews. So really, it's about a guy who's living in the woods in, I think, Washington State or Oregon State, one of those. And beautiful in the beginning, by the way, because of, you know, the, the wooded scenery. But it's about a guy living in the woods with his truffle pig who isn't just there for you know, work purposes. I mean, he does harvest truffles to sell them to make money, but is more of a companion than anything. And one day someone busts in and takes his pig. Now I thought this was, and a lot of other people I, I know before the film came out, thought that this was kind of going to be like a John Wick type film with Nicolas Cage, which let's be honest, would have been fun. It would have been a lot of fun, but uh, I'm glad it was this instead. I really am. It's it's not horror. It's not action. It's just, it's a drama. I mean, it's, it's basically a drama, but it's really well done. That's all I'm going to say about the synopsis. Very pretty setting, like I said. In the beginning, it's a really pretty setting. Um, and then it kind of goes to more of like a cityscape. So we go from the woods to the city because, you know, trying to find the pig, basically. And Alex Wolf's character is helping Nicolas Cage's character go to find his pig. So that's the whole main theme. It's the whole journey that goes on. And it is a journey. And it's a very interesting journey, too. You never feel like you fully know where the film is going to go. And you are, I wouldn't say you're like on the edge of your seat because it's not like fast paced. It's pretty slow, actually. But the pacing really does match the actual main character. So it just feels right. Also, just the atmosphere that's created, the directing, the acting, all of that stuff comes together to make you, or at least me in particular in this case, not really care that it is slow. I just, it had this whole like melancholy feel to the film just throughout. And it just, it's also tranquil at the same time. So like I felt relaxed watching the film. A few moments where I didn't, but that's, you know, that's intentional, but um, well done. The film's actually broken into a few parts, and the titles of those parts have to do with food, which makes sense because it's about a truffle pig and him selling truffles, which go into food, and so, yeah. Uh, but the titles that are food, I'm not really going to go too much into it, they do line up with what's going on in the story and what's kind of coming in the story for those parts, uh, and I like those, those tie-ins. They do work well. 
the film looks really good, and there are actually some really nicely framed shots. That's why I was saying the directing is really nice, cinematography is really nice. It's got this overall look of looking beautifully shot, but it's also very kind of like drab and dark, which helps with kind of a bit of a grittier feel to the whole film in general, which I think really does work in its favor. Now, normally, when especially in the beginning of the film, when you're starting in like a more beautiful place, you kind of want it to be more vibrant colored and more lush, and it makes it more beautiful. But I understand what they were doing as far as the feel of the film. It's... It's dark and, like, gritty and depressing without being depressing, in a sense. At least, the like, the atmosphere that's created and the look of it and everything. And there's a lot of, like, drab colors as well, for the most part. Costuming and, you know, setting alike. It is slow-moving, uh, but like I said, it matches the character, so it feels very much right. Cage is a man of few words in this, but it doesn't matter, because he does a good job with it. If we learned anything from Willy's Wonderland, which I enjoyed quite a bit, um, he knows how to do a role with none or some words. And in Willy's Wonderland, he had there was no lines. But hey, Nicolas Cage can act. What do we? We all know that. You get pieces of the main character's story as the film pro progresses. That was kind of my favorite thing about the film. Well, other than the very end of it and the kind of impact that it actually has. And an emotional impact at that. Uh, which, you know, the film kind of left me sitting in silence for a while at the very end. Because I chose to. Because I kind of wanted to reflect on the film. But it also made me kind of get lost in my emotions after the fact. Because there is a real point to it. Um, but it... I, other than that ending, I really liked how you just kind of slowly get the backstory on who Nicolas Cage's character actually is, where he comes from, why he lives the way he does in the beginning of the film, and there's so much depth of character there, and it's not just him. You, you know, you learn about some of the other characters as well along the way, and it's a really good enlightening, as far as the character goes, enlightening journey. And like I said before, you never fully know where it's going to go, so you're not on the edge of your seat, but you are anticipating that you're you're looking forward to the next little portion that's coming up, the next interaction, the next place that the two characters go to, and what they end up finding or end up not finding. Uh, the film turns into something you actually don't necessarily expect. Uh, and, and I think that is a good thing in the sense because when I'm watching a film and it ends up going the place that I expect it to go or that I wanted it to go initially, that's me kind of feeling like I've imposed my will on the film versus a film like this where it feels like they took me somewhere. They made me experience their film. They made me experience their message and hear their message and maybe feel some things I didn't really want to feel. And that makes me feel like it's great filmmaking. It's great writing. It's just really well done. There is a parallel in this between food and music and how both are basically constructed with meaning and how they end up having meaning uh, for people. So I really did like that, how the food is very much in your face, but also at the same time, if you notice it, the music is another component of it. And these things kind of run parallel throughout the film. And it really is about, and it's very true, like food is constructed in very meaningful ways that have a lot of meaning for people to consume, but for also pe for people to make. And the same thing is, it's exactly the same thing with music. And I just love how they integrated those two things into the film. It's really well done. Takes me to the music. The music is very well matched throughout the film, and they also know when to drop the music for maximum effect. And maximum effect, I mean those moments where either some dialogue is going on or a you know some sort of situation is happening where it's more powerful to have the audience members sit in silence to process it, to kind of feel how they want to feel about it or how they just end up feeling about it because music leads people's feelings. Music leads people's minds, lets them know how they're supposed to be feeling about a scene. So when they drop it out in those moments, it ends up giving more gravity to those scenes, in my opinion. And they knew exactly when to drop the music out. Plus, when there is music, it just sounds really good. It's very well matched. 
It seems that part of the point of the film is to show a stark contrast between where food is procured, but also where it ends up. The, and, you know, kind of make you think about the journey of how food starts off versus how it ends up and how people enjoy it and what it means to people on both ends. You know, the people creating it or the people growing it or finding it in this case and the people making it into a dish and the people consuming it. It kind of hits all those areas. It also shows how appearance informs uh, so much about, uh, so much having to do with assumptions that people make about other people. I'm speaking mainly about Nicolas Cage's character in this because of the way he looks when he goes to the city and kind of how he's approached. But then, you know, you learn other things about him. And it's, you do kind of, or at least I became very cognizant of how I was viewing him in the beginning of the film versus how I changed what I was seeing in him and what I knew about him as the film progressed. And, you know, the, the appearance doesn't necessarily match everything else, as you would think. So I like that little aspect. But in the end, I think it's ultimately mainly about the ties of affection and processing of loss. Um, really, truly, when it comes down to it, it's about humans in general, people in general, you know, ties of affection that people have with each other, with their animals, um, and processing, you know, those affections, uh, the ups and downs of those affections, and also, you know, processing any sort of loss, if that ever comes about. And it's in many ways, and it's with a bunch of characters, and it's um, really well executed, in my opinion. And that's why... That's a big part of why I feel like I was kind of sitting in silence after the end of the film. And for a film to make me feel like I want to do that is pretty, pretty awesome. So anyway, out of five stars with half stars in play, this is a tough one. I was between four and four and a half. I don't think it's quite at the four and a half. I'm going to give a very solid four, but know that I considered going four and a half on this film. I really recommend it. I think it's really good. I know it's not horror, like I was saying, but... You know, I'm going to put this out on like a Wednesday where it's kind of like my grab bag of, of videos to put out there. So hopefully people enjoy this review. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on Pig. We can do spoilers in the comments, so go ahead and do that. Put it down there. Love it, hate it in between. Let's talk. Let's, let's get nerdy about it. Also, do me a quick favor and hit subscribe if you haven't already. If you have already, thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. If you haven't, it is quick, painless, costs you no money, and really does mean a lot to me. At this point, I'm not making money doing this, so really, the motivation that I get comes from seeing new subscribers added. Also, you know, when people, if you hit the notification bell button, you'll know when I'm putting my videos up, which I'm doing about four a week, typically, sometimes more. It's actually usually minimum four a week, sometimes more. Uh, but yeah, if you can watch those videos kind of sooner when they come out that would really help me with gaining more traction and getting more views for the videos so just another way you could potentially repay me you know but regardless i really do thank you for taking your time to watch this video and until next time keep it brutal